We'll go, Kenny? We can go. All right. <laughs> Done a few more of these than you have. I think so. <laughs> uh, well, it, it, we, we'd like to thank uh, everybody with the Music City Bowl and the City of Nashville and, uh, and all the people that help make this thing go for the players. It's, uh, it's really a wonderful place and you can ask for a better venue to keep the team. So uh, and we've had uh, good practices. We focus on practices back home. The energy and the leadership of the seniors has really affected this bowl preparation in a big way. That's not coach speak. They, uh, they truly have uh, energized these guys with, with proper leadership. So, uh, as far as guys that uh, everybody's healthy, with the exception of Nick Coe, so uh, that's that's a plus. Particularly after one good season, it seemed like Nick here, Nick there, not Nick Coe, but Nick of the body. So. Uh, I just got here, obviously, so I'm just kind of using this this bowl prep just to kind of observe and kind of learn about our football team just from an outsider's perspective. You know, uh, what I've seen so far is very impressive in terms of how our guys have prepared for the bowl game. You know, similar to what Coach Steele says, I think our guys have had a good mindset in terms of coming here and, and trying to get the job done. And uh, just honored to be here. And uh, like I said, I, I'm just here kind of observing uh, up to this point. Well, now that we're going to have a question, so we'll get you to the mic. Kenny. Kenny, I was talking to uh, Coach Ray Bowl about your time there. What did you learn from him? And in that time, you were an offensive coordinator on a high school level. How did your path from there lead you to Arizona State? Because I know he's kind of got other connections that went elsewhere, but how did your paths cross and then when did they diverge, so to speak? Well, he was my high school coach, and uh, the biggest thing I learned from him is uh, this deal's about people, and it will always be about people. It's about the players, it's about the people, uh, and that is the profession. It's a profession built around people, and uh, that was the biggest thing I learned from him, and I've kind of taken that with me, and, and that's how I got to Arizona State, is I built a relationship with, with Coach Norvell by coming up and just learning. That's kind of how, how I uh, approach every day is what person can I impact. And uh, if you can impact one person every day, uh, eventually when your time's done on earth, you're going to have to win. And uh, people are going to remember you for the positives. So that's kind of how my path is kind of where it is, just about people. Kevin, when you watch Ron Moore on film over the last month, what goes through your mind? Football player makes plays. Makes plays. Uh, you know, obviously, when you're in the SEC, you face talented players week in and week out, uh, and they they give you you, you take notice of, of you know how how are we going to match up here, how are we going to match up there. And the first thing that you see when you when you turn it on is he he presents issues in terms of making sure you're in the right place, the right way. Just to follow up on that question, how about just Purdue's offense as a whole? Pardon me? Uh, Purdue's offense as a whole in general, when you look at it, what, what stands out in general about Well, I, I think probably the biggest thing is we often say, you hear this, you've been in enough press conferences, well, they're well coached. Uh, and uh, that's a compliment to any football team that coaches use that statement a lot. I think probably the thing that once you dig into it and really break down the, the tape, uh, yes, they are well coached. But the, the play caller uh, is very, very, very difficult to call against. Uh, he, he is, uh, you know, there's the guys that cover us have heard this. When you, when you coach against somebody and they make adjustments at halftime, that's an issue. Uh, every now and then you get lucky when you coach against somebody and they make adjustments on Sunday when they watch the film. And uh, we should have done this, we should have done that. Uh, but the guy that we're going against, uh, tomorrow, uh, he's going to get you the next play. If you're cheating something, uh, to take away something, he is very, very good at, at attacking in that series or soon thereafter. So you've got you've to gotta have more pitches in your, in, your, uh, in your game plan in terms of being able to adjust and alter things because he will find where you're trying to take things away and 
and know what's exposed because of that and attack it immediately. So you can't sit there and throw a fastball at a pitch. You can't throw a curveball. You better have some other balls and sliders too because he's, he's going to attack it. Just, just to follow up on that, is that is your observation just on watching what Purdue has done this year, or do you have a history against going against a prom offense? Well, I, you know, you watch so much tape and, and coaching uh, that you see offenses go against other defenses when you're studying defenses in the offseason, so that's some of it. Um, there's been one time where uh, Jeff was on the other sideline, and uh, I think it was LSU in Western Kentucky. So we have that, but uh, we've been going back and watching every one of these bowl games uh, where he called plays just to see the difference between the season and the, and the bowl game. Uh, it, it's a lot of things. Uh, when you sit there thinking, we actually went back and watched Western Kentucky tape. We watched, watched a lot of tape. Kevin, is, it, is this the healthiest your defensive line's been in a while? And how helpful, obviously, is that going into a game when they have some renewed energy and after being? Beat up and face an SEC offense. Right. It is the healthiest we've been. Uh, you know, all the guys are healthy and, and you can tell it uh, in practice. Obviously, Nick being missing, but uh, Big Cat and, and, uh, and TD have, have done very well with practice sessions, but it is not the healthiest we've been. Kenny, what are your first impressions of the quarterbacks that are behind Jared and the guys you're going to be working with you know, next season? I think they're talented. I mean, obviously. Game reps is something that, that they've lacked, but they're guys that can throw the ball and put the pieces. They're both extremely athletic. Um, so uh, I've been impressed so far, but obviously, you know, from, a, from an outsider's perspective, it's hard to really, you know, from the schematic and the execute of the offense, it's hard to to see how much, how well they have grasped it, grasped it, or how well they execute it when I haven't been here all year to, to see it installed and to see exactly how it should look. Those are things I'm learning myself in terms of the coaching progressions and teaching progressions that, uh, that I'm trying to pick up along those lines. But from a talent perspective, I think they're, they're uh, very down. Kevin, uh, did you have any time to look at some of the young guys in bowl practice as a good play much this year? We, we did. Uh, obviously, in the early part of bowl practice, we ended each practice session with a, with a young guy scrimmage. We did some of that, so we did, but now a little bit different because we played most of our freshmen and played them in significant roles. Uh, we had a large number that played. And so that was limited a little bit, but we had some of the others that uh, had not played that we got good reps with. And, and for Kenny, talk, talk about how much relationship you have with Coach Malzahn before he offered the job and met him when you first remember me. I mean, the first time I met Coach Malzahn was when he came up and Coach Lindsey came up to, to Memphis where I was at and uh, just watching our film and cut-ups and came out to watch a spring ball practice. was the first time I ever met him. And, and the second time I ever met him, I was interviewed for this job. And uh, those were really the first and second times I ever met him. Uh, obviously, our coaching trees uh, are the same tree. And I heard about him all the time in our room. You know, this is what Coach would do. This is what Coach would do, you know. And uh, so I've, I've heard about him uh, more than I've actually met him uh, in a positive light. And, uh, and uh, is it exciting for you or not? Uh, you're probably one of the youngest offensive coordinators at FBS program. Talk about that. I mean, it really has no bearing on me. I mean, I've been young my entire life. Coaching, I started coaching at 17. I got married last year. The youngest person at my wedding, other than my best friend that I invited, was 37 years old. So I mean, my age is some kind of the all my all my friends are one of my best friends is 64. I mean, that's just kind of how I am. My dad's 70, you know, my brother's at 42 and 39. I mean, I just grew up in an environment where, you know, I'm always going to be older than, you know, the year I was born. Okay, how much uh, help is it coming in now uh, to take over the offense before spring practices here and getting to know the guys a little bit about the things and issues? Um, I think it goes back to the first comment. I think the first thing I need to evaluate is the people and the players. You know, I'm just trying to build relationships right now. I mean, you can't coach players uh, that you don't have relationships with. Uh, that's the first and the most important thing in coaching is the relationships that you build. So I think right now, I mean, I joke around with the guys as I'm trying to learn names and I'm trying to build relationships. And I think that's been the most valuable thing for me in bowl prep is learning names and building relationships and kind of figuring out what things make certain players tick, 
what things certain players respond to. Because as a coach, that's what matters. Kenny, obviously you spent these first couple of weeks getting acclimated and just learning names and all that, but what, what has this transition been like you for these first you know, 16, 17 days or whatever it's been? I mean, it's exciting. I mean, but uh, to me, I'm not a guy who gets really too high or too low. I mean, I'm kind of the same person every day. So I would say it's just, you know, it's exciting to get here and, and uh, get, get around this program, which is one of the top programs in the country, and, uh, and get around our players. But uh, I'm just, but from a, too high or too low, surreal, not surreal. It's just, you know, I'm just excited. I'm excited to get better every day. I'm excited to, you know, do what I can to uh, make the Army football program better. Kevin, you guys have built a lot of depth <clears throat> in the second day of this year, playing all these young guys. How valuable is that going in against a team like you, especially in a bowl situation where they may throw everything in the kitchen sink at you on, on, on tomorrow? Yeah, well, they, they, they've got everything in the kitchen sink. See it. Uh, obviously, you know, it is, football is a matchup game, and uh, when, you, when you're going against four wide receivers and five wide receivers, and sometimes you, you probably don't want to have a linebacker covering that guy. Uh, and so, uh, you know, when you've got numbers in the secondary that have played and a pretty good set of numbers, uh, it allows us to at least have an opportunity to try to match up. This is our last question. Uh, Kenny, I was just wondering, as a guy who played linebacker and spent his life on defense, how did you become interested in coaching offense and now where you're known as a, a quarterback's guy? Uh, I think it just started. When you, I think the key to football is understanding defense, whether you coach offense or you coach defense. And I think you know, offense stems from understanding what the defense is trying to take away, understanding why they're trying to take it away, and understanding the weakness of the defense. So I think in high school, I was around some really good defensive coordinators, uh, some really good defensive coaches, and that kind of stemmed me to, to, to want to try to take advantage of, uh, of defense. And uh, that's kind of how I, I made that transition.